do you not just want to broaden your horizons, but completely collapse them? Then this tea might be for you. Hey everyone, I'm Siggy and I love all things poor. Today, I am bringing you a tea that uh, I think, without much of a doubt, is possibly the favorite, my most favorite tea I've ever had. It's um, drinking this for the first time and subsequent times has been a very special experience. And I'm, I'm here today to both share that experience with you, but also have a discussion about kind of the limitations of this video of tea reviews in general, and of kind of knowledge, or how people acquire knowledge in this field of tea for the most part. Now, which tea am I talking about today? Um, it's not the thing that's on the bag here. It is instead a uh, Shang Pua from 1996 stored in Hong Kong, which uh, some of you may know is something I like quite a lot. I'm going to slowly unwrap it here, being very careful with this. It's it is a rather precious tea. There it is. Behold, today's tea. This is a 1996 Manghai Tea Factory 7532 Orange in Orange. And today, we're going to give it a try. Just the dry leaf already has this wonderful kind of aged smell. Um, my tea space here is a bit cramped, so navigating all of this is a little difficult, to be completely frank. I'm just trying to pry it off the edge here. And weigh it out. Uh, in the meantime, my pot is already preheating. After I've uh, gathered enough material, I'm also going to show you something about this tea. Okay, let's let's go with this much. I can clean this up later. Okay. There we go. As you can already see on like the Bing itself, on this side or uh, on this side, there's a decent number of buds in this. pot is nice and warm, so I'm just gonna pour it out and get started on the rinse. I'm trying to go a bit quick because I don't want my water to cool down too much. With uh, these kind of old teas, I find that it's always important to keep the heat as high as possible. So we're just going straight in. Another change you might have noticed is that today I'm using my uh, trusty Tetsubin and not my uh, kettle as usual. Because ultimately what I'm trying to share today is not as much a review as it is an experience of sorts. Because of that, I'm just going to use my let's say, personal favorite setup with all of my favorite tools and so on. Okay, so we've given this a very quick rinse. And I'm just going to prepare the first steep and then uh, we can start talking a bit more. I'm... 
I'm incredibly excited about this tea. Um, one thing I can mention before we uh, start drinking the first steep. This tea is going to be made available on the Nano Oshan shop. However, uh, it will only be sold as small one session samples and limited to one per customer because um, the goal of this video and the goal we have with this tea is to share a special kind of experience. And as such, we want to share it with as many people as possible. To further facilitate this, there is going to be a discount code for this tea. 30% uh, off is what Gabriela and I agreed upon uh, that I'm going to reveal at the end of this video. And there's also going to be a discount code for it on the Nanoshan Discord. So if you're interested in trying this out, uh, make sure to watch the whole thing and or join us on Discord. Of course, uh, I'm hoping that you are going to accompany me throughout this entire video because um, to be quite frank, preparing for this video was kind of difficult because uh, on the one side, drinking such a specialty on camera seemed like a bit of a daunting thing to do. On the other hand, once I had kind of figured out how I want to approach this particular video, um, a fair amount of preparation was required. So I'd um, find a way to kind of articulate the ideas that are going into it. In the meantime, let's stick to some uh, more traditional parameters. Oh. Oh, this smells good. Mm. Yeah, th this is just a well-aged tea. It's got these kind of incense-like aromas. Mm. It still smells clean, though. And uh, it just... It's very inviting. It, it wants to be drunk. And... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it properly on camera, but here's what the liquor color looks like. As we can see, nice and dark, just how I like it. Okay. Now, what's so special about this tea and why am I making such a big fuss about it? Um, proper, genuine Manghai Tea Factory products from around this area, like late 90s to early 2000s, are difficult to come by and often quite expensive. And that's for a reason. These teas are quite special. Um, this tea in particular is, uh, is even featured in this book here, The uh, Profound World of Cheese. And uh, I've put in a bookmark to better show you. So on this particular page here, you can see the uh, 1996. And you've got two orange marks here. One is the green in orange, which uh, has a like green mark on the nefe. And the other is the orange and orange, which is uh, this tea in particular which has an orange mark on the outside and an orange nefe. As we can also see, both of these are 7532 productions. A very interesting recipe in my experience. So all of this uh, comes together like not just it being from Manghai Tea Factory and being a genuine product and whatnot, but also uh, this tea's mention in like reference work, such as the Profound World of Chizu, have given it a very good reputation, which uh, has further driven up prices, unfortunately. But yeah, let's just see what this is like. Um, 
in the meantime, I'm already going to start preparing the second steep because I don't want my water to cool down too much. There we go. Already from the first sip, it's quite easy to notice that tea, uh, this tea is something really special. I could start talking about things like the tea's flavor, its texture, how it makes me feel, how I'm reacting to it, but part of me feels like all of these things that we commonly use to describe tea don't really do it justice, if that makes sense. Like, how should I say it? I think there are certain qualities to this tea that uh, escape this kind of classification. And if we... If we think about tea reviews in general, it showcases that there are certain limits to it. The first and foremost limit, I think, lies basically within me. Like, the kind of experience I'm having here that is brought to you, the viewer, is one that is entirely cha uh, channeled through both my uh, sensory experiences with this tea, which is what happens when I describe things like the smell, the taste, the texture. And it's limited by my ability to describe what's going on. There is a very clear limit here with regards to language. Um, certain aspects of teas are, can't really just be put into words like that. I think there are things out there that are impactful in a way that's near impossible to describe with words, which if you want my personal opinion, is also one sort of big thing uh, that's present in art, right? You can, you can draw things in a certain way or you can write poetry to evoke a certain feeling, to evoke emotions that can't be expressed in a direct way. And... Similar to that, there are these, if we want to call them artistic qualities of tea that um, almost evade a kind of description. It's something you really need to experience for yourself. And this is something that this tea sort of opened my eyes to. We can consume tea, very good tea even, and uh, describe it in ways that make sense to us. We can classify it, compare it to other teas we've had. We can uh, try to build our knowledge that way. We talk about all these different aspects of tea and almost turn the experience of drinking tea into a type of analysis. But it's a... And I think that's also, to a certain degree, where the uh, not just my limitations as the um, purveyor of this tea review, but also the limitations of at least many uh, viewers come in, myself included, when I 
view a tea video because um let's say sort of the the thing the viewer expects out of a video like this is for me to uh uphold that sort of frame of knowledge to classify the tea I'm drinking according to that frame and give it a kind of fixed position within that can then be used to compare other teas too. And I think this sort of uh, stratifying process can't can't really capture a tea like this properly. I think I think we're we're moving towards a level that's kind of beyond that with a tea like this. Oh my god. Um we are I don't know what what should I say like I think the a tea like this even if you consider yourself a poor tea expert or somebody who is knowledgeable who knows a lot about poor who's tried a lot of stuff I urge you to try a tea like this because like I've said in the intro bit I th this isn't just about expanding horizons because in some way the idea of expanding horizons could be seen as uh, taking your existing structure of knowledge the one that I've been talking about just before and uh, adding to it just sort of adding new blocks expanding it that way but essentially keeping the same structure inherent the importance of the part where I said collapsing your horizons is that we're not just adding to the existing structure we're taking the entire structure away and building something completely new I think these kind of these kinds of almost intense experiences are what ultimately has a bigger impact on us and this tea at least to me personally was an experience like that it I think uh, opened my eyes to experiencing tea in a way that I feel like I haven't been doing before It's it, it's really astounding. It's because this tea has opened up my eyes to like a depth of poor tea that I haven't really been able to even imagine before. Of course, I knew that there were like all of these special and famous prestigious teas out there. But I think without actually having experienced one, it's almost impossible to even imagine how they would compare to the kind of teas you are usually drinking. Yeah. Ah, oh, this. Yeah, it, it, it's really tough to put into words, but I think as soon as you drink this tea, if you like poor tea at all, or maybe even if you don't particularly like poor tea, I think a tea like this is just so special that it transcends preferences to a certain degree. It. It's just really phenomenal. Oh, so good.
yeah. Now, one thing I am interested in thinking about now is, is, is there a meaningful way to convey these kinds of experiences? Of course, um, like I said, we're going to share this tea. It's uh, going to be on Anwashana small samples and whatnot. So the best way to share it right now is probably just um, making it accessible to people. And outside of that, um, maybe maybe it's also time to think about how exactly to do these kinds of tea review videos. Or what exactly it is that should be conveyed in them because um, if if a tea is as special as this one, what words are there that I could use to really make people understand that? It's really difficult. If you allow me for a second, I just need to check my notes about one thing real quick. Okay. Um... What I had to check was uh, Gabriel and I discussed how we could bring this tea to people. Uh, like I've mentioned before, what we kind of ended up on is that we are going to sell this as 10 gram samples on the Nanwashan store. It's going to be uh, one sample per customer only. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be, it's not going to be cheap. As I said, this is a genuine Manghai factory uh, production with a fair deal of renown. So um, this is potentially the most expensive tea that's ever been sold on Nanwashan. I'm not 100% sure about that, but at least it's the most expensive one I've seen on there so far. So 10 grams of this tea are going to be sold for 75 euros. But we are going to offer discount codes, both for people in this video and for people on the Nanoshan Discord. Uh, we are going to offer in this video a 30% discount with the code, that's what I'm looking up now, 96 H K H K. Uh, this code is going to be uh, redeemable for 10 days. This video will be released on a Friday. So it's uh, going to be available until Sunday night, Monday evening of the week after that. And yeah. With this tea, even more than with other teas that I've tried on this channel so far, I am very much interested in your impression. If you do get a sample of this, um, try not just telling me what you thought of the tea, how what it tasted like, how it made you feel, etc. But um, try to tell me how it sort of affected you. Did it change anything about the way you view tea was all of that talking I did earlier about the limitations of language and of this format and whatnot at all um, did that make you think in any way and if you have an idea for different ways to approach uh, conveying 
these impressions of tea. Please, absolutely, let me know. I, I not just want to know, I need to know. I think maybe, maybe we'll find ways to go a step further to convey things about tea that can't really be conveyed well through just regular use of language. Maybe, maybe there is a different way. Now, I hope that you all liked this kind of more out there video. If you did, you know what to do. Please uh, comment, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'm really looking forward to the discussion we're going to have together in the comments because I think, or at least I, I hope I gave some of you some things to uh, think about, to consider. I hope that this tea, even more than myself, is going to leave a lasting impression with you. And I hope that this kind of experience I had with this tea and how much it affected the way I see this this whole field of tea. I, I hope it can have a comparable effect on any of you that end up trying it. It, I think to some extent, this tea was a very humbling experience. Because more than anything, I feel it showed me that there are so many things I still don't understand enough and that there's so much just out there that's left to learn. That tea really does seem to be a never-ending journey and as such I feel we're all going to be here for a very, very long time. But no matter how long the time may be, it's always an enjoyable one. And as such, I hope you too enjoyed this video. And we're definitely going to see each other again soon. Goodbye.